Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to take a look at the new Auto Setup plugin for 3D Studio Max. This basic overview will cover all of the important settings to get your character looking the best, as well as how you can import your animations from iClone. In addition to character models, you can also easily transfer props, animations, and entire scenes into 3ds Max, and use Arnold and V-Ray for photorealistic rendering. To get started, make sure that you've downloaded and installed the plugin to 3ds Max. Be aware that there are three different versions to accommodate your version of 3ds Max. After you log into your Relusion account and fill out the subsequent form, the download will begin. Unzip the zip file and run the bat file, which will install the plugin to your 3ds Max. Once that's done, you'll find the Auto Setup plugin under a dedicated Reillusion item in the top menu. Let's walk through the simple process of exporting an FBX from Character Creator and importing it into 3ds Max. Go ahead and export as usual from the File menu, then choose 3ds Max as the Target Tool preset. If you have animation with the model, also be sure to choose the frame range that includes your animation. There's no need to enable Use Subdivided Mesh here, as this will automatically be performed within 3ds Max. In the Auto Setup panel, choose your preferred render engine, in this case we're selecting Arnold. Click Browse FBX to find your model's FBX, which will also load in the respective JSON file produced by Character Creator upon export. After import, you can scrub through the timeline to see the animation. and open the Material Editor to see the maps all assigned correctly. In addition, you can see the facial morphs have also been imported just fine. The Auto Setup plugin includes a number of convenient environmental and render settings in the Look Dev tab that can give you appealing visual results in 3ds Max. There are both head and full body lighting presets that can be applied and removed with a single click. There's also a Macbeth chart you can use for color correction reference. In the HDR sub-tab, you'll find four preset HDRI maps as well as an option to load in your own. There are also rotation and strength sliders and some global exposure parameters for both exposure and white balance. Once you have the basic settings that you want, go ahead and render to see the results. Next, let's take a look at shader and wrinkle adjustments via the Material tab. A standard Reillusion character model will contain a number of different meshes for the body, eye components, teeth, and tongue. However, other model types may not. For the body mesh, you'll find a significant collection of parameters that you can adjust to refine the basic skin appearance, roughness, subsurface scattering, and wrinkle. The eye mesh also has a number of separate parameters for its various components, which you can play around with to see the results. The material parameters will also be different for the teeth, which can be adjusted for different effects. As mentioned, there are also different meshes for all of the hair elements, including for the facial and scalp hair. Their respective parameters are all consistent with those found in Character Creator. There is also a Wrinkle sub-tab under the Materials tab, which is enabled by default. There are 13 defined wrinkle areas that you can select from the drop-down menu, each with Strength and Rate of Appearance sliders, which determines how quickly a wrinkle will appear in the defined area. Click in the viewport to see your adjustments take effect. The wrinkle system in Character Creator is separate from the basic texture maps and is in place to add an additional level of realism to your renders. Let's look at the body rigging next. Auto Setup supports the 3ds Max biped and cat binding systems. Make sure your body mesh is selected, and then click Create Rig to create a skeleton called BIP001, which you can expand to see the bone hierarchy. Naturally, the 3ds Max biped rig is human IK enabled, so you can move and rotate your character's extremities to check the results. Clicking Enable Rig will allow you to select the various bones from the controller, 
including individual fingers. Be aware that in order to control the hip bone, however, you'll need to select it from the Max Motion panel. Set planted keys for both feet in order to move the hip bone down and see the IK result with the feet planted. Let's create a cat rig next using the same process, which will create a skeleton named CC3 Pelvis. You can do the same checks here, and naturally also use Enable Rig with the body mesh selected for easier and more accurate bone selection. With the cat rig, the hip controller works right away without the need to adjust any settings. You can delete your current rig at any time via the Delete Rig button. You can use this controller along with the face rig to quickly pose your character and give it an expression, which we'll look briefly at next. You'll find the controller for the facial blend shapes in the Face Rig tab. In this case, we have a CC4 extended profile that contains a comprehensive collection of blend shapes, allowing you to produce subtly detailed expressions via the various sliders. Be aware that you'll need to get your model set up with a completed facial profile in Character Creator in order to use this panel. Please refer to our facial profile tutorial for more information. You can use the Reset to Zero button to reset all facial blend shapes back to their default values. This controller makes it super easy to get some great expressions for quick renders. Okay, finally, let's look at how to get your motion data into 3ds Max and apply it to your character using the Auto Setup plugin. To begin, naturally you'll want to have a motion applied to your character, then continue on to FBX export with the 3ds Max target tool preset selected, making sure your frame range and FPS are correct. Use the same Browse FBX button to find the correct FBX, only this time in the Import options, be sure to select Update Animation from the File Content dropdown, as we don't want to replace the mesh, only the animation. You can now see the same animation we had in iClone retarget flawlessly to our current character. A couple of quick tips for your final render. Be sure that your character has the wrinkles enabled in the Auto Setup panel to add that extra layer of realism. You can also tweak various render setup values, such as setting camera and subsurface scattering values to 4 or higher, and transparency depth limit to higher than 10. After that, you're ready for your final render. With Arnold and 3ds Max, you can get exceptionally realistic renders for your character creator characters, so give it a shot with some of your own. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.